You saw the title, this is an inexpensive camera for street photography. Hi, my name is Martin, I'm a photographer, designer and content creator from Sweden. And today we will talk about the Panasonic Lumix LX100 Mark II for street photography and why it might be a perfect beginner street photographer camera. All right, point one. It is a really small, compact and easy to bring with you camera. The form factor is super nice, it feels sturdy in your hand, it looks really really good, which is a plus for me. It has these physical button and switches for the different settings, so for example on the top you have this shutter speed that is this ring that you twist, and on the lens you can find the aperture, which has this haptic ring that you also can twist, which makes this into a perfect camera to learn how to use the manual settings on a camera, because you have these physical interactive buttons that, that you need to change if you want to change the settings. And number two, this camera has a micro four third sensor with 17 megapixels. It has 4K video functions. There is a built-in lens, you can't change it, it's not interchangeable, but the lens has an aperture of 1.7 to 2.8 and is a 24 to 75 millimeter lens. So no, it is not the highest quality of sensors that we have out there today, but it is really good for beginners and for street photography and with the 24 to 75 millimeter lens it makes this camera very versatile and works in a lot of different uh, scenarios which is something you really want if you are doing street photog photography. Oh and speaking of the lens this is actually a Leica DC Vario Sumilux lens which is also kind of funny because this camera the Panasonic Lumix LX100 Mark II is pretty much the exact same camera as the Leica Deluxe 7 because Leica and Panasonic did a collaboration where they collaborated on making a camera and instead of releasing it separately or instead of releasing it together they did two versions of it uh, one each and, and released one camera each and Panasonic is the Lumix LX100 Mark II and like I released the Leica Deluxe 7. So you could say that you are getting a cheaper version of a Leica camera because they are pretty much exactly the same. And next up, the reason why this is really good for street photography is that it has an 11 frames per second continuous shooting. So it's perfect for those bursts and if you wanna try capturing someone walking and just trying to capture some action. So it is quite fast, it has a electronic viewfinder and a larger LCD screen. There are three different modes. So up here there's a small button, I don't know if you can see it, if, but it says FN5 and if you press that you will toggle between different modes. So if I press it once you can see that it will turn on or turn off if I cover the uh, viewfinder and it will light up again if I remove uh, something from the viewfinder and then if I press it once again the LCD screen will turn off and the, L uh, the viewfinder is the only one working and if I press it once again we will go back to the mode where it's only the LCD screen on so there are three different modes it shoots in RAW and it has sort of this street photography feel to the images I can't really explain it and I'm no professional like camera reviewer or anything like that but if you know what I mean you know what I mean but I sort of feel like it has this really streety vibe to it but then you can edit your photos and I know most of you can. I think it has a decent amount of battery life I think it says online that it has around 340 shutters or something like that uh, but personally I've been out shooting some street photography with it and I haven't had any problems with the battery dying on me. And then finally, another reason why I think this camera is perfect for beginners in street photography is the price. It's really price worthy. Uh, I think it's around 1000 bucks or something. And with that, those were sort of the pros of this camera. But before we continue with some of the cons that I have with it, I would just like to take a minute to thank the sponsor of this video, which is me. <laughs> so I just released a motion graphic template of this text effect here, the typewriter text effect, which is linked down below in the first link in the description. So please go check that out if you are interested. And with that, let's continue with some of the cons of this camera. All right, let's start off softly, I guess. And that is, this is, might not be the fastest camera. Before I told you about the 11 uh, frames per second. And what I mean about that, since this camera has these physical 
buttons to change the settings, it takes a little bit more time. And this can be both positive and negative. If you look at it from a positive perspective, I think it helps new photographers to learn how to use a camera. But on the negative side, I think it can take a little bit more time. And when you're doing street photography, sometimes time is like crucial to get that perfect shot. And we're, when we're talking about speed, uh, the lens is quite slow. So if you want to increase the zoom, it takes like, I don't know, two seconds, three seconds to go from 24 millimeters to 75 millimeters. But as I said, this camera kind of forces you to slow down. And I think that's a good thing as well, because it makes you look around a bit more you see your surroundings and I think you, you kind of stop and think a bit more about the shot that you're about to take. Just look at this spot. Therefore, I think it's also a positive thing, especially for new photographers. All right, and the second con is that even though this is a pocket camera, it's not really truly pocketable because, I mean, it is a little bit too big to fit in your back pocket. It definitely fits in a, like a jacket or an overshirt or something like that, but not really in the pocket of your pants. So it is a little bit bigger uh, in the regards of being a pocket camera. And another con about the lens is this um, focus wheel, which is really sensitive. So it is quite easy to sort of um, accidentally touch it and twist it a little bit if you are in manual focus mode. So if you're trying to change the aperture here, this haptic ring, then it's really easy to just touch the um, focus ring a little bit. So I think it's a little bit too sensitive. I would prefer it if it was a bit more resistant to it. And then my final con is that it is not perfect. I guess no camera is perfect, but it's not the best in low light conditions. It works up to a certain point, then it gets a little bit too grainy in my taste. Um, but that might be because I'm used to other cameras. But for street photography, sometimes I want that grain and then it doesn't really matter. But I do think that it is lacking a little bit in the low light conditions. But with all of that said, I feel like I've been holding this camera so much and just throwing it around in front of you. But with all of that said, I do feel like this is a great new uh, beginner street photographer camera because you get so much camera for the price that you're paying for it. So I think this camera can really last a, quite a while for someone that is starting out. So I, it's really worth the money in my opinion. But I would love to hear what you think about it. And I do have quite a few videos on this camera on my channel already. So go check those out. And I also have a few street photography videos, POV videos with it as well. So check those out as well. They will be linked somewhere and we are getting really close to 1000 subscribers i'm super excited and thank you all for subscribing it means so much to me and i will see you guys in the next one bye